All right, folks, now that we've made short work of our train rob environments, it's time to get on with today's topic. Welcome back to Black Bear Outdoors. Today we're looking at a bit of a classic. This is the Marlin 336 chambered in 3030 Winchester. Now for those guys outside of North America and you're not familiar with the 3030, we'll take a look at that cartridge in a minute as well. It is, however, probably the uh, cartridge and caliber that's taken the most deer in the history of North America. So if you think of the Westerns of old and the spaghetti Westerns we grew up with, the Clint Eastwood movies and so forth, uh, you always think of three different rifles. It's usually the Winchester, the uh, Henry rifles, and as well as the Marlins. So this particular Marlin, the 336, is a direct descendant of the 1893 model. Those were produced until 1936, where it evolved into the Marlin 36. And of course, in 1948, uh, this one uh, came to market uh, known as the 336. So why are we asking the question in 2019 if this is still a good buy? In 2007, Remington Arms Company bought Marlin um, as a whole. And rumor has it that 200 employees left, whether they were laid off or left by themselves, I don't know. Uh, however, those guys were the actual craftsmen, the guys who took so much pride in their work. And Remington were left with the machines, the, for, you know, all the molds that they needed, but they didn't really know what they were doing, it seems. So uh, there was a lot of scrutiny on these rifles at that time. Uh, people were complaining about the fit and finish and so on. Not so much about the uh, functionality, but seriously the fit and finish. From what I can ascertain on the internet, um, people are pretty happy with today's uh, iterations of these rifles. This particular one is kind of in the middle. It's uh, manufactured around 2014, so the fit and finish is not bad, but it's not spectacular either. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it inside and look at the features. Well, it's a lever gun, it doesn't have many features. Uh, and I'll show you a closer look at the uh, actual fit and finish, and you can decide for yourself. What we'll do then is we'll take it out to the range, uh, see how well it functions, and test a few theories about the 3030. Stay tuned. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with uh, the 3030 cartridge, uh, this is just a little size comparison. So over here we have the uh, 7x57R, then we have the 3030, then we have a 556 NATO or a 3223, and we also have a 9mm. Now an interesting fact about the uh, 3030, if you can see there, you'll see the nose is rounded off. I'll illustrate why in just a second using some snap gaps. So the 3030 round was designed to be used in a lever action rifle uh, that is tube fed. So the issue here is why they had to blunt off the nose here is when you stack rounds into a tube, uh, they obviously sit like this, right? So tip to primer. So to avoid any unwanted discharges in the tube, they had to blunt off the tip so it can't uh, ignite the primer there. Now that also has a bit of a downside uh, since that would change the ballistics and these are known for not having the best uh, ballistics characteristics and it's not a super long range uh, cartridge so you're not going to shoot it over the plains of the Serengeti but it's more of a brush round and a medium to short range uh, deer round. So now that we got the rifle on the table let's take a quick look at kind of what characteristics it has. It's not a, not a very complicated machine, um, it's obviously a lever action, so pulling the lever down and up will cycle the, the action and it will eject the round and load up a new round from the tube. Uh, now the way it loads is, it's a side loader, so it loads in the side gate here, and I'll show you how that works with uh, a couple of snap caps here. So the round goes in kind of at an angle, and it's pushed down there into the tube, right? Next round follows it, and that's where it'll push on the primer, like we said before, and it fits in there. So this particular one takes six rounds in the tube, and uh, yeah, the interesting thing about the Marlin, which makes it a little bit different, 
is that it's not a, a top ejector like the Winchester. So it leans much more for people who want to put scopes on these. Personally, I won't. I think this is a rifle that's supposed to be shot with open sights, but that's just me. As you can see, it takes six rounds in that tube there, and it's got a bit of a fenced uh, front sight post. The rear sights are adjustable. It's buckhorn sights, so it kind of looks like a buckhorn. Interesting way of, of doing it, though, I hope you can see there, uh, is you have to, if you have to adjust the sight up or down, you literally have to pull up on the buckhorns, and it's got this little sliding tab that you can set it up and down with. If you have to set it left or right, you literally have to take a mallet and whack this left or right. So very crude, but very effective sights. And again, like we said, it's a side ejector and uh, leans towards using uh, scopes on this. So yeah, that's pretty much the features of it. It's a fairly straightforward machine. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the fit and finish. I'm going to try and give you guys some close-ups and you can decide whether you think it is good enough or not. So that's kind of what the wood looks like. There. So it's not too bad. Nothing that's going to bother me personally. Now you'll see there's a little bit of a gap there, but again, no ledges or anything that's going to bother me. And I quite like the wood. In my opinion, the fit and finish is really not too bad. It's not something that I'm going to complain about. So there you can see the whole thing. So something that needs to be said about this rifle, again, the 3030 is uh, probably a cartridge that has um, harvested the most deer in North America's history. And it's a fantastic little brush gun. Um, again, it's a very simple mechanism, which leans towards a lot of reliability. But uh, personally, I haven't had any issues with it at all. Uh, cycles perfectly. But uh, let's go put it through its paces at the range, fire a few shots, see how it goes. Stay tuned. All right, folks, full disclosure, we've only used uh, Remington quarter locked 150 grains in this rifle so far. And today we're going to use a bit of an unknown Winchester 150 grain round. Uh, so I don't know where they'll group or if they'll group, but we'll soon find out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shoot at 50 yards and uh, get a kind of a baseline, see where, where these rounds print. And what we'll do then is we'll uh, put a little theory to the test because there seems to be a school of people who believe that uh, at 100 yards, the 30-30 has a significant drop and you can't shoot with it beyond that. So we'll put that theory to the test as well and see if we get any, any bullet drop. So at 50, we did really, really well. Um, it shoots a little bit high and a little bit left, but we managed to get the first two shots into the same hole. Let's see what happens at 100. At 100 yards, uh, there was no sign of any form of bullet drop. It was, however, quite left and quite high. The rubbish group, that's just me or the ammo. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the rifle. So after a bit of tinkering with the uh, sights, uh, we managed to hit the gong all day long.
Right, folks, so final thoughts on the rifle. Um, I think it's a fantastic little brush gun. Is it a collector's item? Not by a long shot. But you know what? For the price and the utility you get out of this rifle, you can't beat it. It's a great truck gun, it's a great camping gun, and you can hunt deer with it. It's fun to shoot, and as a bonus, makes you feel like Clint Eastwood. What I will do, though, is uh, I'll probably add some uh, Skinner sights, peep sight and a, and a taller front sight post, just to make uh, sight adjustment a little bit easier and a little bit more precise. But, uh, guys, you shouldn't forget the cardinal rule about shooting a lever gun. You gotta wear the hat. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button on the next screen, it looks like a black bear badge. And uh, yeah, leave us a comment, we'll try and get to those as soon as possible. We'll see you next time.